Warning, this story contains extreme violence, slasher elements, and murder. I encourage you to listen to the entire story, and if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated. In the forgotten town of Black Hollow, there was a mansion perched on a hill. Its looming, decaying structure cast shadows over the lifeless town below, where no one dared to tread. It had stood there for centuries, abandoned and left to rot, yet its reputation remained. Legends of the tortured soul trapped within the mansion's walls had been whispered for decades, keeping the curious at bay, but some stories, even the darkest ones, have roots in truth, Catherine was once a beautiful young woman, full of life and curiosity. She lived in a time when such things were frowned upon for women of her station. Her intelligence made her dangerous, they said. Her defiance made her a threat. But it was her beauty that sealed her fate, the mansion was once a place of twisted indulgence, where those in power could fulfill their darkest desires away from prying eyes. Catherine was taken there, accused of witchcraft, seduction, and sins of the flesh she never committed. Her pleas for mercy fell on deaf ears as she was shackled to a cold, stone table in the mansion's dungeon, a place where screams had long ceased to echo above ground, the torturer was a man of influence, a high-ranking lord who enjoyed inflicting pain as much as others enjoyed fine wine. For weeks, Catherine endured agony beyond imagination. Her body was carved, twisted, and mutilated in ways no human could bear. Her screams turned to whispers, her voice hoarse from crying out in agony. Yet, the worst of it wasn't the physical pain, it was the breaking of her spirit, her last moments were not those of anger or even fear. They were filled with the hollow despair of a woman who had accepted that no one would come to save her, years passed, and the mansion became forgotten. Nature reclaimed it, yet something darker remained, festering in its bowels. Catherine's spirit was not freed by death. Her suffering had bound her to the mansion, her soul twisted by the torthless spirits, she was consumed by vengeance. The man who had tortured her lived a long life, untouched by the justice he deserved. His lineage continued, his bloodline tainted by the horror he had sown, as Catherine's rage grew, she learned how to reach beyond the veil. Those who entered the mansion now were not just trespassers, they were conduits. She needed to find him, the one who had ended her life in torment, or any of his descendants, her spirit took on a more terrifying form, the once beautiful woman now a hideous figure of torn flesh and jagged wounds, her eyes hollow pits of rage and sorrow. Every inch of her body bore the marks of the torture she had suffered. Her skin still seeping blood from wounds that would never heal. Her voice was no longer her own, it was the combined screams of all those who had suffered and died in the mansion, and so, the mansion became a beacon for the damned. Those who ventured inside were dragged into her memories, forced to relive her agony. But it wasn't enough. She could only rest when she had exacted her revenge, when she had spilled the blood of the one responsible, or his kin, one stormy night, a group of thrill-seekers dared to explore the mansion, driven by stories of hauntings and ghostly whispers. Among them was Marcus Blackwood, the descendant of the man who had tortured Catherine to death. Unaware of his ancestral ties, Marcus had always been fascinated by the paranormal, eager to uncover what lay beyond the physical realm. He and his friends thought this would be a harmless adventure, a way to stir up some excitement in their otherwise dull lives, they didn't expect the mansion to feel so dot alive, as soon as they crossed the threshold, the air thickened, heavy with the weight of a presence that watched them. The mansion's interior was crumbling, the walls covered in mold and rot, but it was the sound that un barely audible at first, seemed to crawl through the walls, echoing in their ears, this place gives me the creeps, one of Marcus's friends muttered, glancing around nervously, Marcus shrugged it off, though he, too, felt the weight of something unseen pressing down on him. Come on, we've been in worse places. It's probably just the wind, but it wasn't the wind. 
The whispers grew louder, taking shape into words that chilled them to their bones. Help me. Don't listen. Don't listen alone, the group's nervous laughter died in their throats as the air grew colder. Something was wrong, and they all knew it, though no one wanted to admit it, as they ventured deeper into the mansion. The whispers became more distinct, carrying with them the pain of someone long forgotten. They led the group toward the mansion's lower levels, down crumbling staircases into the heart of the darkness, Marcus led the way, flashlight in hand, his pulse quickening. It felt as though the very walls were closing in on him, suffocating him with their decay. His breath caught in his throat as they reached a door, rusted, barely hanging on its hinges. Behind it, something called to him. He could feel it, his friends hesitated, but Marcus pushed forward, driven by something he couldn't explain. He swung the door open, revealing the dungeon, the sight inside turned their blood to ice. Chains still hung from the walls, rusty and blood-stained. A stone slab sat in the center of the room, cracked but still smeared with the remnants of what must have been Catherine's blood. But it was the figure in the corner that truly terrified them, a woman, no, a monster, stood there, her flesh torn and ravaged, her eyes glowing with a hatred so intense it threatened to burn the air around her. Her lips, barely holding together, parted into a grotesque smile as she stepped toward them, do you hear them, she whispered, her voice a cacophony of tortured souls. Hearing them, one of Marcus's friends bolted, but the moment he reached the doorway, the door slammed shut with a deafening bang. They were trapped. Catherine's ghost had been waiting for this moment. She had sensed Marcus's presence the moment he entered the mansion, his bloodline calling to her across time. He was the descendant of the man who had caused her unimaginable pain, and now, her revenge was at hand, the lights flickered, then went out completely, plunging the room into total darkness. Panic set in as the group huddled together, their breaths coming in short, terrified gasps, one by one, they fell, Catherine's ghost moved swiftly, her form flickering in and out of the shadows, dragging each victim into her world of suffering. The screams that followed were unlike anything Marcus had ever heard. His friends were being torn apart, their bodies twisted and broken in the same way Catherine's had been, but it wasn't enough. Marcus could feel her presence closing in on him, her breath cold against his skin as she whispered in his ear, you carry his blood. You carry his sins, Marcus was alone now, trapped in the darkness with Catherine's ghost. He knew he couldn't escape. He could feel the weight of his ancestors' sins pressing down on him, could see flashes of the torture Catherine had endured. Her broken body, her shattered spirit, it was all laid bare before him. Please, he whispered, tears streaming down his face. I didn't do this, Catherine's laugh was hollow, devoid of any humanity. It doesn't matter. His blood runs through your veins, her fingers, cold and sharp, wrapped around his throat. You will suffer as I suffered, as Catherine's hands tightened, Marcus felt his body breaking, his mind splintering under the weight of the pain. Her revenge was complete, but spiraling. His body twisted beneath Catherine's cold, spectral grip, bones snapping and sinew tearing. His breath came in ragged gasps as his throat constricted beneath her weight. She was relentless, her form flickering in and out of reality, sometimes visible, sometimes nothing more than a breeze of agony whispering across his skin, but then, just as his vision dimmed, the grip loosened, Catherine's ghost paused, a twisted satisfaction seeping into her translucent features. She tilted her head, as if considering something deeper. Perhaps death, she decided, was too easy for Marcus. It wouldn't erase centuries of torment. It wouldn't undo the pain she had endured in that room. No. His suffering needed to last, Marcus collapsed to the cold stone floor, coughing and retching. His body convulsed in pain, but he was alive. Barely, I will let you live, Catherine whispered, her voice slithering through the darkness. 
But not without consequence, she stepped back into the shadows, her form blurring into the walls as though the mansion itself was her domain. The air became unbearably cold, and Marcus felt something else shift within the decaying structure. The whispers in the walls grew louder, crawling into his mind, planting seeds of terror, this place will become your tomb. You will not escape. You will not die. Not yet, Marcus's eyes darted around the dungeon. Desperate to find an exit, a crack in the wall, anything. But the room had changed. The door through which they had entered was gone. The walls seemed to pulse, as if alive, drawing him deeper into their madness. His friends, what was left of them, were scattered like broken dolls, their eyes frozen in terror, their bodies contorted in unnatural positions, the smell of decay and blood thickened in the air, suddenly, Marcus heard it. The sound of chains rattling. Slowly, methodically, like someone, or something, was dragging a heavy weight across spiraling. His body twisted beneath Catherine's cold, spectral grip, bones snapping and sinew tearing. His breath came in ragged gasps as his throat constricted beneath her weight. She was relentless, her form flickering in and out of reality, sometimes visible, sometimes nothing more than a breeze of agony whispering across his skin, but then, just as his vision dimmed, the grip loosened, Catherine's ghost paused, a twisted satisfaction seeping into her translucent features. She tilted her head, as if considering something deeper. Perhaps death, she decided, was too easy for Marcus. It wouldn't erase centuries of torment. It wouldn't undo the pain she had endured in that room. No. His suffering needed to last, Marcus collapsed to the cold stone floor, coughing and retching. His body convulsed in pain, but he was alive. Barely, I will let you live, Catherine whispered, her voice slithering through the darkness. But not without consequence, she stepped back into the shadows, her form blurring into the walls as though the mansion itself was her domain. The air became unbearably cold, and Marcus felt something else shift within the decaying structure. The whispers in the walls grew louder, crawling into his mind, planting seeds of terror, this place will become your tomb. You will not escape. You will not die. Not yet, Marcus's eyes darted around the dungeon. Desperate to find an exit, a crack in the wall, anything. But the room had changed. The door through which they had entered was gone. The walls seemed to pulse, as if alive, drawing him deeper into their madness. His friends, what was left of them, were scattered like broken dolls, their eyes frozen in terror, their bodies contorted in unnatural positions, the smell of decay and blood thickened in the air, suddenly, Marcus heard it. The sound of chains rattling. Slowly, methodically, like someone, or something, was dragging a heavy whisk scrambled backward, pressing his body against the farthest wall, his heart pounding so violently it felt like it might burst from his chest. Then he saw her again, but this time, Catherine's ghost wasn't alone, they emerged from the shadows, figures twisted and broken, their faces contorted in eternal screams. They were the spirits of the others who had died in this mansion, victims of the same torture that had claimed Catherine. Their eyes were hollow, their bodies a grotesque reflection of the pain they had endured in life. They were bound in chains, their wrists and ankles torn and bloody, dragged across the floor by some invisible force, Marcus tried to scream, but no sound came out. The tortured spirits surrounded him, their cold, dead hands reaching out. One of them, a woman whose face had been burned beyond recognition, grabbed his wrist. Her touch was icy, burning his skin with a cold fire that seared straight to his bones. Her eyes, wide and soulless, bore into his as she whispered, You are one of us now. The others closed in, their skeletal fingers tracing the lines of his body, their breath like the stench of rot and decay. Marcus felt their agony seep into him, felt his mind begin to unravel as their pain became his. 
They showed him their deaths, each one more brutal than the last. The man who had created this hell, his ancestor, had relished in their suffering. And now, they wanted Marcus to feel every moment of their torment, you will never escape, Catherine's voice echoed through the room, though she was nowhere to be seen. You will live in this house of horrors until you beg for death. But death will not come for you, Marcus. Not until I have had my fill, Marcus's vision blurred as the tortured spirits pressed closer. He could hear their whispers, their cries for mercy that had never been answered. His mind fractured under the weight of it all. He wanted to die. He needed to die. But death was a mercy this place out, trying to push the spirits away, but his hands passed through them, like trying to swat away smoke. They laughed, their voices a chorus of broken souls, their laughter twisting in his mind, echoing through the hollow spaces in his skull, in that moment, Marcus knew. He was no longer in control of his fate, the mansion shifted around him, its very structure bending and warping. The walls moved as though alive, pressing closer, then pulling away. The floor cracked beneath his feet, revealing an abyss of writhing bodies below, their arms reaching up, trying to pull him down into their eternal suffering, he stumbled, his body weak and broken, but something in him fought to survive. Perhaps it was instinct, or maybe it was the last vestige of humanity clinging to life. He needed to escape, though every rational part of him knew there was no escape, Marcus bolted down a corridor, his breath ragged, his legs barely able to carry him. The mansion twisted around him, shifting in ways that defied reality. Hallways became endless, doors appeared and disappeared, and the walls seemed to stretch into infinity. He was trapped in a maze of nightmares, each turn leading him deeper into the heart of the house's malevolent power, the whispers grew louder, the walls bleeding with the cries of the damned. His hands trembled as he reached for a door, any door, his fingers scraping at the splintered wood. As he yanked the door open, he fell into a room he had not seen before, it was the torture chamber, the stone slab in the center of the room was stained with blood, fresh blood. The instruments of pain, rusted but still sharp, hung from the walls, their grotesque shapes casting shadows that seemed to move on their own. Chains dangled from the ceiling, and in the far corner of the room, something stirred, a figure, bound in chains, struggled against its restraints. It was a woman, no, it was Catherine. But this who had been in life, the last moments of her torment captured in a perpetual loop of agony. Her body was broken, her flesh torn and bleeding, her face a mask of despair, she screamed, the sound of visceral, that wrenching cry that tore through Marcus's mind. He backed away, but there was nowhere to go. The room had sealed itself, trapping him in this moment of Catherine's endless suffering, suddenly, the instruments on the walls began to move. One by one, they floated into the air, their sharp edges gleaming in the dim light. They hovered for a moment, then shot toward Marcus with terrifying speed. He screamed as they sliced into his flesh, ripping him apart piece by piece. The pain was unbearable, worse than anything he had ever imagined, and through it all, Catherine watched, her broken eyes followed his every movement as he writhed on the floor, his blood pooling beneath him. She smiled, a slow, sickening smile that twisted her mutilated features into something grotesque. You feel it now, don't you? She whispered, her voice a mix of pleasure and hatred. The pain. The endless, suffocating pain, Marcus's vision blurred, his body trembling violently as the instruments of torture continued their gruesome work. His screams echoed through the mansion, joining the chorus of the damned. He was becoming one of them. His mind fractured completely, splintering into a thousand pieces. Each one filled with agony, Marcus awoke in darkness. His body was no longer his own, it felt distant, as though it belonged to someone else. He was still in the mansion, though the world around him had changed. The walls were no longer solid, but instead pulsated with a life of their own, 
the flesh of the dead seemingly woven into their very structure, he was no longer a man. He was something else, something twisted, something broken. The torture had not killed him, but had transformed him. His body was now a reflection of the pain he hard and torn, his limbs twisted and malformed. He was a creature of the mansion, bound to it just as Catherine had been, and the mansion was hungry, the tortured souls of the past surrounded him, their hollow eyes watching, waiting. Catherine stood among them, her face no longer one of sorrow, but of triumph. She had won. Her revenge was complete. But her suffering was not over, and neither was his, you will never leave, she whispered, her voice soft but filled with malice. You will be trapped here for eternity, just as I have been. This is your fate, Marcus. This is your punishment, Marcus tried to speak, to beg for mercy, but his voice was gone. He was no longer a man to his bones. The darkness that had consumed him felt alive, watching him with unseen eyes, Catherine had disappeared, along with the other tortured souls, leaving him in this horrific limbo. He was a prisoner in his own body, trapped within the walls of the mansion, his every step marked by the weight of unseen watchers. As the moments passed, Marcus felt something gnawing at the edges of his consciousness. It wasn't just the lingering pain from the torture that had twisted his body, it was something worse. The mansion was changing again, warping and shifting like a living organism, and he could feel its hunger, but he wasn't alone. He could feel the presence of the others, the souls that had been trapped here long before him. They whispered in the shadows, their voices like a breeze passing over his skin, soft yet filled with dread, she's watching, one of them whispered, barely more than a breath in the darkness. She never stops watching, Marcus tried to turn, to look for the source of the voice, but his body refused to obey him. His limbs felt like lead, weighed down by the invisible chains that now bound him to the mansion. His head turned sluggishly, as though the air itself had thickened. Suffocating him, and then he saw her, Catherine stood at the far end of the hallway, her eyes gleaming with an unnatural light. Her broken body hung in the shadows, her face twisted into a grotesque smile. She wasn't alone. Behind her, the other tortured souls began to appear, their forms flickering in and out of existence like phantoms. You thought you could escape, Catherine hissed, her voice slithering through the air like poison. But no one leaves, her words echoed through the walls, bouncing off the decaying wood and stone. The mansion seemed eating off her hatred, Marcus tried to speak, but his throat closed around the words, choking him. His mind was a swirling void of terror, broken memories, and the relentless grip of the house. You'll suffer as I did, Catherine continued, her voice growing louder, more manic. You'll feel every cut, every burn, every scream. Over and over, until you beg for death, the mansion trembled, the very foundation shaking as if the earth beneath it was ready to swallow it whole. The walls cracked, the floorboards creaking under the weight of the tortured souls that now surrounded him. Marcus's breath hitched, his heart pounding in his chest as the full horror of his fate became clear. This wasn't just about Catherine's vengeance. The house was a prison for lost souls, and Marcus was its newest prisoner, but as he stared into Catherine's glowing eyes, a question began to gnaw at him, why hadn't she killed him yet? Marcus's thoughts swirled like a storm, fear and confusion battling for control. Catherine's wrath was palpable, a burning force that seemed to fuel the mansion's malevolent energy. But the fact that she hadn't ended him outright, hadn't allowed him the release of death, told him something else was at play, the mansion was playing a game with him, a twisted, deadly game, you're not the first, Catherine said, her voice low and venomous. There were others before you. They all thought they could escape, too, her eyes flicked toward the walls, and for a moment, Marcus saw them, faces, distorted and screaming, pressed against the wood and stone as though trapped just beneath the surface. They were the others who had come before, the ones who had entered this cursed place and never left, 
But as their eyes met his, Marcus realized something. They weren't just trapped. They were watching. The house was feeding off them, draining their life force, their pain, their fear. And now it had its claw feeding off her hatred. Marcus tried to speak, but his throat closed around the words, choking him. His mind was a swirling void of terror, broken memories, and the relentless grip of the house. You'll suffer as I did, Catherine continued, her voice growing louder, more manic. You'll feel every cut, every burn, every scream. Over and over, until you beg for death, the mansion trembled, the very foundation shaking as if the earth beneath it was ready to swallow it whole. The walls cracked, the floorboards creaking under the weight of the tortured souls that now surrounded him. Marcus's breath hitched, his heart pounding in his chest as the full horror of his fate became clear. This wasn't just about Catherine's vengeance. The house was a prison for lost souls, and Marcus was its newest prisoner, but as he stared into Catherine's glowing eyes, a question began to gnaw at him, why hadn't she killed him yet? Marcus's thoughts swirled like a storm, fear and confusion battling for control. Catherine's wrath was palpable, a burning force that seemed to fuel the mansion's malevolent energy. But the fact that she hadn't ended him outright, hadn't allowed him the release of death, told him something else was at play, the mansion was playing a game with him, a twisted, deadly game, you're not the first, Catherine said, her voice low and venomous. There were others before you. They all thought they could escape, too, her eyes flicked toward the walls, and for a moment, Marcus saw them, faces, distorted and screaming, pressed against the wood and stone as though trapped just beneath the surface. They were the others who had come before, the ones who had entered this cursed place and never left, but as their eyes met his, Marcus realized something, they weren't just trapped. They were watching, the house was feeding off them, draining their life force, their pain, their fear. And now it- Marcus croaked, his voice a rasping whisper. Why haven't you killed me? Catherine's smile widened, a grotesque, bloodied thing. Because death would be too easy, she said, stepping closer, her broken body creaking with each movement. You need to understand. You need to feel what I felt, Marcus recoiled as she reached out, her fingers brushing against his skin. Her touch was ice cold, sending a jolt of pain through his body. I want you to suffer, she whispered. I want you to live in fear, knowing that any moment, I could take you. But I won't. Not yet, her eyes gleamed with twisted pleasure, and Marcus felt a sickening realization wash over him. This wasn't just about vengeance. Catherine was enjoying this. She wanted him to be afraid, to live in constant terror of what was to come, the house was her tool, her weapon. And Marcus was its latest victim, but something deep inside him, something primal, refused to give in. He wouldn't let the house break him. He couldn't, Marcus staggered back, his mind racing. He had to get out, he had to find a way to escape before the mansion devoured him completely. But the walls were alive, the doors disappearing as quickly as they appeared. Every step he took seemed to lead him deeper into the twisted maze of the mansion's interior, but then he remembered something, something he'd heard in the whispers of the other souls. There was a way out, he didn't know what it was, or where to find it, but he knew it existed. It had to, with renewed determination, Marcus turned and ran. The mansion shifted around him, the walls warping and groaning as if trying to stop him. But he kept going, pushing through the suffocating darkness, ignoring the whispers that clawed at his mind, he turned a corner and came face to face with a door, a door that hadn't been there before, it was old, heavy, and covered in strange, arcane symbols that seemed to hate it for a moment, his hand trembling as he reached for the handle. He could feel the malevolent force emanating from the door, but he had no choice, he pushed it open, the door creaked loudly as it swung inward, revealing a long, narrow staircase that descended into the darkness below. The air was thick with the stench of rot and decay, but Marcus had no other option, 
He descended into the abyss, his heart pounding in his chest. The further he went, the more the air around him seemed to change. It was colder, the shadows thicker, as if the very darkness itself was alive and reaching for him, and then he heard it, a sound that chilled him to his core, footsteps. Slow. Deliberate footsteps, coming from the depths below, Marcus froze, his breath catching in his throat. He couldn't see anything in the darkness, but he could feel it, something was down there, waiting for him, something worse than Catherine, the footsteps grew louder, echoing up the stairwell like the approach of death itself. Marcus's pulse raced, his mind screaming for him to run, but his body refused to move. He was trapped, caught between the darkness below and the horrors above, and then, from the shadows, a figure emerged. It was tall, its form cloaked in a tattered, black shroud that seemed to bleed into the darkness around it. Its face, or what passed for a face, was hidden in shadow. But Marcus could feel its eyes on him, cold and unfeeling, this was no spirit. This was something older, something far more dangerous, it moved with unnatural grace, it stepped silent as it approached. Marcus backed away, but there was nowhere to go. The stairs behind him had vanished, replaced by a solid wall of stone, the figure stopped mere inches from him, its presence suffocating, you've come far, it said, its voice a low, guttural growl that reverberated through Marcus's bones. But there is mud ran cold. This was the source of the mansion's power, the force that had trapped Catherine and all the others. It was ancient, malevolent, and it wanted him, you will join us, the figure continued, reaching out with a hand that seemed to be made of pure shadow. You will suffer, as they have suffered, Marcus screamed as the hand closed around his throat, the cold seeping into his very soul. The darkness wrapped around him, pulling him down into the abyss, into the endless nightmare that was the mansion, but just as the last of his hope began to slip away, he heard it, a voice, faint but unmistakable, Catherine, the figure paused, its grip loosening ever so slightly. Catherine, the voice repeated, stronger this time. It was coming from above, from the mansion itself, and then Marcus realized, it wasn't just Catherine's voice. It was all of them. The tortured souls, the ones who had been trapped here for so long. They were fighting back, the figure snarled, its grip tightening once more, but the voices grew louder, filling the air with their defiance. No more, they whispered, their voices rising in a crescendo. No more, the figure howled in rage, its form flickering as the power of the souls began to overwhelm it. Marcus could feel the mansion itself trembling, the walls cracking and crumbling as the spirits fought for their freedom. The mansion quaked violently, as if the tortured souls trapped within its decaying walls were finally rising against the dark force that had held them in its grip for centuries. Marcus gasped, feeling the suffocating hold around his throat loosen. He stumbled back, clutching at his neck, the air thick with the cries of the long-forgotten dead. The cloaked figure before him writhed in fury, its form flickering in and out of the shadows like a candle about to be snuffed out. The voices of the damned, Catherine's among them, grew louder, swelling into a cacoff, they chanted, their whispers like a storm gathering strength. No more. Marcus could feel the mansion itself bending to their will, its oppressive atmosphere crumbling under the weight of their collective suffering. For the first time since entering this hellish place, he felt a glimmer of hope, thin and fragile, but there, the dark figure let out a howl of fury, its voice reverberating through the halls like the roar of a beast. It swelled, growing larger, more monstrous, as if trying to consume the very souls that were defying it. Shadows coiled around its body, writhing like serpents, but Marcus could see that it was weakening, losing control. Join me, Marcus, it hissed. Its voice slithering into his mind like a poison dagger. Together, we can rule this place. You can have power beyond imagination, just give yourself to me. Marcus recoiled, his heart pounding in his chest. He had seen what this place did to those who succumbed to its malevolent influence. 
Catherine's broken, twisted form flashed before his eyes, a warning of what awaited him if he gave in. No, he whispered, his voice trembling but resolute. I won't be like you. The figure shrieked, its shadowy form flickering wildly as the souls continued their rebellion. Marcus could feel their energy filling the mansion, the weight of their suffering pushing back against the dark entity that had kept them imprisoned for so long. But the battle was far from over. From the corner of his eye, Marcus saw Catherine emerging from the shadows, her once broken body now more solid, more real. The glowing light in her eyes burned brighter than before, filled with a terrifying intensity. She was no longer the shattered, vengeful spirit who had tormented him. She was something more now, a force of reckoning. You, she spat, her gaze fixed on the cloaked figure. You took everything from me. You twisted my pain, my anger, and used it to feel as Catherine approached, the shadows around it retreating as if even they feared her wrath. Marcus could feel the power radiating from her, a cold, burning fury that had been forged in the fires of unimaginable torment, no more, she whispered, her voice like ice cracking in the dead of winter. You will pay for what you've done. The figure screeched, lashing out with its shadowy tendrils, but Catherine was ready. She raised her hand, and with a flick of her wrist, the shadows disintegrated, dissolving into nothingness, the souls of the damned surged forward, their collective will bending the mansion's very foundation. Walls crumbled, floors split open, and the darkness that had consumed this place for so long was torn apart. Piece by piece, Marcus watched in awe and terror as Catherine unleashed her full fury on the dark entity. She wasn't just seeking revenge, she was obliterating it, the cloaked figure shrieked one final time, its form unraveling as the souls devoured it. The air filled with the sound of its agonized wails, echoing through the mansion like the last breath of a dying beast, and then, just as suddenly as it had begun, it was over, the mansion fell silent, the oppressive weight that had hung over the mansion lifted, replaced by a stillness that felt almost alien after the chaos. Marcus stood frozen, his mind struggling to process what had just happened. The dark entity was gone, consumed by the very souls it had tormented for centuries. Catherine stood in the center of the hall, her form flickering slightly, but she was no longer the tortured spirit he had first encountered. Her eyes met his, and for a brief moment, Marcus saw something he hadn't expected, peace, thank you, she said, her voice soft and almost human now. For not giving in. Marcus swallowed, his throat dry. What happens now? Catherine looked around the crumbling mansion, the weight of centuries of suffering still little be free, she said. Their torment is over. And you? Marcus asked, a knot tightening in his chest. Will you be free too? Catherine's expression darkened, her eyes filled with a sadness so profound that it sent a chill down his spine. I'm bound to this place, she said quietly. I was made into something else. Even with him gone, I can't leave. Marcus's heart sank. After everything she had been through, after everything she had done to help defeat the entity, she was still trapped. But you, she continued, stepping closer. You can leave. He blinked, her words not fully sinking in at first. What? You're not bound to this place like I am, she said. You can still escape. Go, before it pulls you back in. Marcus's mind raced. The thought of leaving, of escaping this nightmare, was almost too much to hope for. But as he looked at Catherine, he felt a pang of guilt. She had suffered so much, and now she was offering him the one thing she couldn't have, Catherine. He began, but she cut him off, don't, she said, her voice firm. You need to go, Marcus. You've done enough. The mansion trembled slightly, as if warning him that his time was running out. The walls creaked, and the floor beneath his feet seemed to shift, reminding him that this place was still very much alive, 
Marcus hesitated, torn between the desire to escape and the feeling that he was abandoning her. But Catherine's gaze was unwavering, and he knew she was right. If he stayed any longer, the mansion would consume him too, with a heavy heart, Marcus nodded. Goodbye, Catherine. She didn't respond, simply giving him a sad smile as she began to fade into the shadows, becoming one with the mansion once more, Marcus turned and ran, his heart pounding in his chest as he raced through the decaying corridors of the mansion. The walls groaned around him, the floorboards cracking under his feet as the building the darkness creeping back in, trying to reclaim him, but he pushed forward, driven by the single thought of escape, the front door loomed ahead, its old wood creaking as it opened just a crack, allowing a sliver of moonlight to spill through. Marcus didn't hesitate. He threw himself at the door, pushing it open with all his strength, the cold night air hit him like a wave, and he stumbled outside, gasping for breath. The mansion loomed behind him, its windows dark and empty, like the hollow eyes of a corpse. He could still hear the faint whispers of the souls inside, but they were growing quieter, fading into the night. For a moment, Marcus just stood there, staring at the mansion. Unsure of what to do next. His mind was numb, his body exhausted from the ordeal. But as the minutes passed, the reality of his situation began to sink in. He was free, the mansion hadn't taken him. The darkness hadn't consumed him. He had survived, but the price had been steep. Catherine was still trapped, along with countless others who had suffered and died within those walls. And while the dark entity had been defeated, the mansion still held its grip on them, Marcus felt a surge of guilt, but he knew there was nothing more he could do. He had fought, and he had survived. That was all that mattered now, with one last look at the decaying mansion, Marcus turned and walked away disappearing into the night, but as he walked, he couldn't shake the feeling that the mansion was watching him, its unseen eyes following his every step, as the days turned to weeks, Marcus tried to put the events of the mansion behind him. He moved to a new town, started a new life, and did his best to forget the horrors he had witnessed, but the nightmares never left, every night, he dreamed of the mansion, of its decaying halls, its suffocating darkness, and the tortured souls that still he dreamed of Catherine, her broken body and glowing eyes, watching him from the shadows, and every morning, he woke with a sense of dread that he couldn't shake, the mansion had let him go, but it hadn't forgotten him, he knew, deep down, that one day it would call him back. And when it did, there would be no escape, because in the end, no one truly leaves the mansion.